the early 80s, the fund management industry in Singapore was still very much in its nascent stage and there were insufficient talent pool of professionals who are well uh, qualified in the fund management industry. And over the years, the increasing number of CFA charter holders that has grown in Singapore, I personally think that this has helped to develop Singapore as a major fund management, asset management industry. A GIC was a pioneer in encouraging its investment staff to pursue the CFA program, especially in the early days. When Singapore went about building its financial services business, I think we recognized early on that this business is about managing other people's money and building their wealth. However, we need to earn the right to do this, and we earn this right by building trust. Integrity and ethics is one part of earning that trust. The second part is competence, and the CFA program has helped instill this competence amongst our staff, especially in the early 90s. So in Singapore codes of ethics as well as standards, the baseline expectation is set by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Since 2005, IBF has also come in to complement these efforts by working with CFA to, to develop programs so that we can be more nimble, we can be more agile, and we can meet market requirements as and when they come up. We're looking forward to continuing, uh, strengthening in fact that partnership that we have with CFA uh, as well as other stakeholders within fund management. The industry is growing while the world continues to evolve. We need individuals who are proactive and can develop their own unique approach and perspectives. They must carry strong ethical values, be driven, and quickly develop credibility. CFA charter holders generally bring a solid blend of theoretical and practical knowledge. They are driven individuals who complete a rigorous study program, more often than not while working, and they pass challenging professional exams. It's a genuine commitment to increasing one's potential and a worthy accomplishment which people within the industry recognize and value. When I look at, uh, because of my investment background, when I look at the uh, uh, security, I usually evaluate it based on three aspects of technical factor, valuation factor, and a fundamental factor. Um, I will look at the CFA um, uh, differentiation uh, in those three aspects also. I think one, uh, technically they are very knowledgeable because of the broad base and training across multiple asset classes uh, and having to develop understanding for different uh, customer uh, groups. Uh, second thing, they are very versatile in terms of valuation. And the last thing is really uh, a very balanced, good balance uh, approach that they, that they bring to businesses. And, and, that is, and part of that is really driven from a focus on continuous learning uh, being updated about uh, what is happening in the marketplace, about future trends, uh, and be able to prepare themselves uh, for the future. In the past few years, CFA Singapore Society's Advocacy Committee undertakes activities all from the perspective of protecting investors' interests. We believe that the best form of investor protection is investor education. As CFA charter holders, that's our area of expertise. Now, Singapore is the financial centre um, of Asia and we have very high education uh, levels. Um, but I do think that financial literacy in Singapore has room for improvement. The Save and Invest portfolio series uh, that we've partnered with CFA Singapore on, we profile three Sing very real Singaporean investors. And every month in the Sunday Times, um, there's an article that previews how the portfolio is doing. Readers can follow along. So I think CFA Singapore and SGX working together to make sure that we continuously reinforce the importance of investing. The CFA credential is the most recognized investment management destination in the world. Investment managers are usually well-versed in only one or two disciplines. CFA charter holders offer greater expertise edge over other investment professionals. There will be 
I would say, erosion in our industry and the lower base of our profession is likely to be at risk. Uh, that means that will include professions who have not um, kept relevant, uh, whether it's in terms of standards or in terms of ethics. Charterholders can be better positioned to help society and the industry uh, for future challenges and trends by realizing um, what are the and, and leveraging on the available uh, facilities that we have being part of a, of a membership of a global organization. And so I think there are many conduits where the CFA, uh, society, uh, charter holder and the society can uh, play a meaningful role in, in, in helping us grow to the next stage. We hope that CFA Singapore will continue to lead in the investment management profession by promoting the highest standards of ethics, education and professional excellence. Strive for greater diversity in the investment management profession as complex financial problems can benefit from diverse thinking. Strive for greater partnership with regulators to shape policies for Singapore and strive for greater employer recognition of the CFA Charter for our members. We believe that we're heading in the right direction and making a difference that truly matters.